this march is a major change of tactics from the Yellow Vest protesters. They've gone from demonstrations every Saturday and blocking roundabouts across the country in November and December to holding a strike on a working day, and one that's attracted people from a wide range of professional sectors. People including train drivers and air traffic control staff have said that they did plan to strike, although we haven't yet heard of any disruption on transport or indeed in schools, although the majority of people who've come out here to protest are public sector workers. We've been speaking to people like nurses and teachers who say that they're joining common cause with the Yellow Vest movement because they believe the government has cut public services here in France too much too quickly. We're protesting because teachers are rarely listened to. We get talked down by the government and by other people. And we think we have a lot in common with yellow vests. And marching with them is a good thing. There aren't enough teachers in school. There aren't enough doctors or nurses in hospitals. That's been the case for years. But under Macron, it's getting worse. And it's terrible. That's why you see nurses in our white blouses here along with other workers. Public sector workers like the school staff behind me say they're determined to keep up pressure on the government and that they will continue to strike until President Macron listens to them and puts more money into public services. And for more on this story, TRT World's Craig Kapitas joins me now live from Miami. Craig, great to have you on the show. Now, of course, you live in Paris and uh, you know you've been following these protests uh, all the time. Now, you've written an article in the, uh, the Daily Beast about the French protests, the yellow pests, as uh, they call it. Now, I just want to pick up on a few points that you mentioned, starting, uh, let me quote you, uh, the yellow vests say Macron is genuinely and personally offended at finding himself running a country where a seven-course meal has devolved into a six-pack of KFC fingers and a glass of cider. What does that mean, Craig? Did I write that? <laughs> you wrote that, indeed you did. <laughs> Your words. Ma Ma Macron comes from the upper echelons of French society. Uh, and he and the people he works with, uh, the yellow vests would tell you, have absolutely no understanding of their lifestyle, of what they're suffering from, of the hardships that they face on a day-to-day -day basis. And every time you talk to Macron, people interview Macron, he is very upset. Mm -hmm. uh, by this because the French population, in his mind's eye, are not living up to the standard that he creates for them. And he is trying, though. He's having these national debates. And again, to quote you, uh, you say Macron describes his great debate with 67 million French people as a consultation. And be assured, the examination will be as lurid and as painful as consulting with a proctologist. I had to Google what that was, but uh, please explain what you mean by all this. Well, it's 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 like going to have your behind <laughs> examined uh, by a doctor, which is what a proctology is, and and the French are feeling the pain. Uh, Macron's poll numbers are now up, uh, now thirty four percent. They're up about six percent from about a, uh, six points from a few weeks ago. But there's uh, still more than 66 percent of the public disapproves of what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And these events that he's had so far have been very difficult for him and very difficult for the mayors and the other people who participated in. And what's this, what this has led to, Marie, and this is significant, one of the reasons I'm in Miami this week is Miami is the favorite destination of the French diaspora. This is where they're now coming to live. Uh, emigrating in, in very, very large numbers. So many, Maria, that this region right here now has a deputy in the National Assembly to represent just the American or the French people in this area in southern Florida. And uh, that's, that's an interesting point. And also, uh, London, where I'm from, is, of course, full of French people as well. And I'm sure uh, maybe that's seeing... Uh, many people going there too. Now, I just want to ask you about another point that's been making news uh, today. The French government is planning to pass new laws to crack down on demonstrations. What do you make of that? Well, it's, it's going to uh, foster more demonstrations. Uh, the, the French response has always been when these demonstrations get out of hand is to try and stop them. And that's never worked yeah. historically in France. Remember, I think you pointed out 
uh, you know, last weekend was Act 12 mm -hmm. in the Yellow Vest's uh, drama, as the Yellow Vest call it. We're now moving into Act 13, and this is this play, this show, is not going to end anytime soon, and it's going to become more and more painful. And it's significant, Maria. It's significant, something to reflect on. The people, the French people we're seeing in the streets today are not the ones who are leaving the country. Yeah. They've decided to, you know, they can't afford to leave. So what, what you're having is more and more of the French middle class getting out of this. And when you talk to them, as we have here at Money Talks, what they're saying is that, uh, you know, their, fear, their fears include, you know, the disintegration of the French state, uh, the strength of the European Union, and they feel safer in other ports of call living there. In fact, the two major areas, the, the first place they'd like to move to is Switzerland, okay. and the second place okay. is the United States. Craig, interesting points you make there. Thank you very much for your analysis. Uh, that's TRT World's Craig Capitas in Miami for us. <laughs>